All right, we're looking good. Everything looks clean on the YouTube. So far, no hiccups, no crazy alerts. I think we are live. It's been a while. I had to take a little time off. You know, we try to take vacations as often as possible, but obviously it's a little different this year, trying to get out. Uh, and uh, it's also uh, been so busy. It's hard to find time to take vacation. Um, need to unplug. You know, it's been such a busy year uh, for both my wife and I and, and my ki our kids, obviously, but uh, and uh, needed, a, needed a little time to just chill and just sit back and not have the warehouse to worry about and orders to ship out and, uh, you know, the stress of getting the kids to school or anything like that. So it was nice to take a little time off, but I missed you all. I missed you so much. Um, it's weird. It's been uh, a whole month since I did a gear talk and that's uh, a record. I think I've only missed maybe one week at a time, uh, but not doing a whole episode for a month was weird. I also did a live stream yesterday. So if you haven't uh, caught up with the live streams that I'm doing, uh, I do a little live stream session by myself, sometimes with a friend, but usually by myself in the warehouse. And I like to do, you know, an hour or so skate and it was a month since I did a live stream. And that was mostly because things were just crazy back in the warehouse. But I am back. I'm super happy. And I'm ready to get started. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 78 of Gear Talk. Gear Talk is the show that I do every other week or so, where we talk about the geekier side of rollerblading. If you know the difference between a carbon and a carbon free and why one doesn't, it's kind of like nonfiction and fiction, why the carbon has the carbon and the carbon free is plastic, but it doesn't say plastic, you've come to the right place. If you've ever asked about those crazy questions, why do people name things this way? Or why are we using an M4 instead of a T25? Uh, you've come to the right place. Gear Talk is the show where we break down the weird things about rollerblading and we try to explain why the decisions were made to do things the way that they did, try to help you find that perfect skate, that perfect setup, so that you can unlock many tricks, so that you can skate longer without blisters and discomfort, and ultimately have a much better experience when you're out skating. Um, I do this every other Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, live on YouTube. So if you're able to join us live, it is a great time. Uh, we usually get a few dozen people hanging out in the live stream and they chat and they talk about things. Uh, if you are there live now, I would love to hear your questions. Uh, please make sure that you tag Back to Blading on your questions so that I can see them. They show up in orange and I'm able to pick out what questions you might have for me versus what random questions you might have for anybody else in the chat. If you're watching this after the fact, uh, definitely leave a comment on the video. I would love to answer your questions or if you have uh, some comments that you'd like to make about some of the topics that we talk about tonight, uh, that is the best place to do it. Just leave a comment in the video. I always read the comments. I don't necessarily respond to everything, but if you ask for a response and if you have a question, I do my best to respond and give you as much of an educated answer as I have. Like I do for the beginning of every episode of Gear Talk, I wanted to thank the helmetinitiative.org for helping us with our helmet giveaway. We are very big proponents of wearing helmets here at the Back to Blading World. Uh, I think it's important that everybody who has access to a helmet wears their helmet. It is silly to not wear a helmet. I know that it feels kind of weird sometimes, and I know that you might not feel super cool, but a reminder, you're an adult with wheels on your feet. You're already not the coolest out there. And I think you should embrace that fact and protect yourself so that you can be not cool for a lot longer. Helmet is the best way to prevent yourself from traumatic brain injury. Helmets can cost anywhere from 20 bucks to 50 bucks to 100 bucks to 200 bucks probably. And I know that some of us out there might have a limited amount of cash flow and you know don't have enough money to afford a helmet. So we've partnered with the helmetinitiative.org to give away some helmets. Uh, because we missed last episode, we're going to be giving away two helmets this week. And uh, here's how to do it. So go to backtoblading.com slash helmet. You put in your information and I will pick two people at random 
to award a helmet to. If you are in the US, we will find a triple eight, usually a triple eight uh, certified sweat saver. That is what the uh, helmet initiative has been buying and sending to me. So uh, those are my favorite helmet. Those are the helmets that I like to wear. And if you're in the US, we'll pack up and we will send a helmet out to the winners as soon as possible. If you're outside of the US, we'll probably give you a voucher or we'll work with a local shop to send you a helmet. But rest assured, I'm not looking for a sob story. I'm not looking for pictures of your bloody head split open needing staples or anything like that. If anything, I would love to just give it to somebody who just needs a helmet. Uh, you got to promise you're going to wear it, though. That's the most important thing. We don't want to give away helmets. They're just going to sit in the closet collecting dust. It's super important that you protect yourself. I also want to thank our Patreon supporters. Uh, without the Patreon supporters, we wouldn't be able to send these helmets out. So the Helmet Initiative does a great job in providing us helmets, but then we have to ship them out. And the money that we make from our Patreon supporters goes to help fund the shipping costs for these helmets and to purchase helmets in places outside of the US. If you're interested in supporting the program or in supporting everything that we do here at Back to Blading, uh, go to patreon.com slash back to blading. Even a buck a month would really help. We would love uh, nothing more than to have more supporters so that we can send out more helmets. And uh, thanks again to the Helmet Initiative for uh, sending us the helmets. All right, uh, let's see, a little housekeeping. I usually try to keep this short, but because it's been a month since we did another episode, I've got a few things that I wanted to talk about. First of all, people have been asking about these knee pads. These are the ALK13s from, I think they're just the ALK13. That's the brand, isn't it? They're just the ALK13 knee pads. Yeah, ALK13. It's just the knee pad from ALK13. It's not a brand or anything. It's just ALK13. These are my new favorite knee pads. Um, I got these about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, and I have been wearing them ever since. They are extremely flexible and soft. They fit my legs really nicely. I got the size large, extra large, and I don't know my measurements for my knee, but I'm a fairly normal sized dude, I guess. I don't have big legs, but I don't have small legs. So these fit me just fine. I do have them cranked. They use Velcro for their fastening in the top and the bottom. And you can see the Velcro is fairly cranked. So it's pretty tight on my legs. I'm able to slip them on and slip them off and I don't get any slippage of uh, the knee pad slipping off or anything like that. There's nothing on the inside that keeps them from slipping around. Like sometimes they have like neoprene or, uh, or maybe this is neoprene, but they have like some sticky like material that will keep it from sliding around. There's nothing like that in this inside here. It just kind of stays there. But they've been super protective. The most important thing about these, while the padding is nice and thick but flexible, most important thing is it offers side protection. So this is where I used to get some serious bruises. So whenever I miss on a sole grind or whenever I slip out on a Royale, especially on a down ledge, I slip out on a Royale and I end up on my the side of my knee and I would just get red and bruised and black and blue from falling over and over on the side of my knees. And this did a great job of protecting me from that. I've fallen on them and I don't feel anything. It doesn't offer a ton of padding. It's not like you're going to be able to jump off a, you know, a 10 stair and land on your knees. I wouldn't recommend anybody do that in the first place. But if you did, these aren't the knee pads for you. But if you are just going to go out and street skate and fall down from time to time, these are the pads that I recommend. Um, they were probably around 60 bucks, maybe 70 bucks. The catch is that I've only been able to find them in Europe. So I haven't been able to find a distributor here in the US. I think that Pro Skater Place sells them up in Canada. And there's a bunch of shops that get them in Europe. I got these from This Is Soul in Amsterdam. And they were sent over from a friend over in the Netherlands who sent me some skates and then smuggled these in the box. Don't tell customs. Uh, smuggled these in the box. So I was able to get these from him. They might be a little difficult for you to find if you're in the U.S. and you're looking for them. But um, maybe give them an email and ask if they have any plans for distribution within the U.S. I think it would be awesome to have another knee pad brand, especially a knee pad brand that's really designed for what we do. 
Um, this outside of the knee protection is super unique. And you see a few brands that try it, but this is the best implementation of it. It's really nice Kevlar style, slippery, non-breaking protection on top. They are amazing pads. So highly recommended. Um, definitely, if you can pick up a pair, if you're looking for under the pants pads, this is the trick. I wouldn't wear these with shorts. I think they're under jeans. I think this neoprene or this, uh, what is it, Teflon, I think, what, whatever this is, Kevlar, Teflon, whatever. Teflon is what you put on pans. Kevlar is what you put on bulletproof vests. I think that's Kevlar. They work really well, uh, but I don't think they'd work really well holding up to sliding on concrete or rough terrain if this is all that there is. You know, if it was under jeans, I think it would help. And maybe your jeans would rip. I would hate to see you rip these because then they would be less effective. Anyway, ALK 13s, highly recommended. Great knee pads. Um, I will continue to report back if anything changes, but so far so good. I am washing them uh, in the machine wash uh, every, every session. So I throw them in with my shin guards and my pants and my you know, shirt and wrist guards and everything. They all end up in the wash and they are great. So highly recommended. Um, great work, whoever designed them. I think it was Toto Gali um, and his group, but yeah, great, great work with those knee pads. Really, uh, really a big fan. Uh, what else do we have? So um, I have been skating a lot. So um, I usually like to start the show with the current setup that I'm on. This might segue into a bunch of different things, but um, I have been trying to skate as much as I can, and I've been doing some stuff that I don't normally do. So, you know, when we were at vacation, we took some time off in the mountains, and I was skating the Mountain Skate Park in West Jefferson. It's an amazing skate park. Um, the obstacles aren't great, but I was able to skate some mini ramp, which I'm really not great at, but it's always a good opportunity to go out and skate transition. Being a ledge skater, being a street guy, I don't skate transition very often, so this was a nice breath of fresh air skating something else. Um, I am back on my USD carbons, oh, which are here. So these are my USD carbons, and I absolutely love these skates. Um, they are the 2018 version of the USD carbon. They are a carbon shell with a leather-ish material skin, an integrated liner, a nice plastic cuff, and a 45 degree strap. They're UFS and they use the USD carbon sole plate. You can also put on the USD 7 sole plate and I have been putting on that USD 7 sole plate. I put on the USD carbon sole plate because I wanted to skate, what was I skating? Oh, you know what it was? It was these. So when I skated these frames, these big wheel frames with the Matt Lyon um, 80s, I wanted to have an all black skate with a big pop. And these wheels are so bright that they definitely did the job. So that's why I swapped out the sole plates. I was skating the white USD 7 sole plates, but I swapped out with the black sole plates when I put on these big wheels. So I skate the US, the uh, USD Carbons. These are my favorite skates. Um, I am skating the 5050 Prime frames. They're still not here. Um, they were supposed to land in Charlotte a couple days ago, and they still haven't. So Lord knows what's going on. Shipping has been impossible. They sat in the port over in Los Angeles for a month and just kind of sat there. And I guess there's some big port slowdown with an influx of goods and trade and stuff in the US. It's really congesting everything up. So things are taking a lot longer than they should. Our products got stuck in that congestion. But um, I've been skating the prime frames. I absolutely love them. I think you'll love them too when they come in. All of the pre-orders are going out as soon as we get the frames in. Shops will be getting them as soon as we get the frames in. So if you have them on order from us or if you have them on order from your shop, uh, definitely uh, check in in a couple of weeks. We'll probably have them in our warehouse next week and then we'll probably start showing up in shops the following week. There should be plenty out there. We sold through all of them, so we don't have any more in stock here, but shops should have inventory. So you should be able to find a pair out there if you're interested. They come in black, they come in white. I love the black, but the white is really nice. Um, I am skating the Chroma Antis. So long story about these. 
Um, I've been testing these for, I don't know, a little bit. Um, we've had some issues with the urethane. So it's something that I never really considered. Uh, but for whatever reason, the urethane that I've been using for samples is different than the urethane that I was using for production. The urethane for production is wearing down much faster than it should. And I'll show you. So these are the, these are the turquoise anti-rocker wheels. These are 47 millimeter. They're 90, uh, 75D. So they're super hard. The samples that we were using worked fine. These, maybe you can see, find a good one. You can see there's a flat spot right here. That is horrible. So I never saw that when we were testing. Uh, I actually have the ones that we were testing up here. So these are the Chroma anti-rocker wheels that we were testing back in the days. Uh, these are some red ones. They're super early samples. They don't spin. This was before we used integrated cores. So this was a 100% urethane wheel. That won't make a difference with the wear, but it will make a difference with the spin. They don't spin. But you can see these are perfect. Absolutely no problems. I skated them for two sessions. Granted, I only skated at skate park, but I was still skating ledges and I was still getting up on things with Royales. You would be able to see some wear if I were skating these and if they were going to wear. Not much difference than the tricks that I was doing here. And just on the first few grinds, there's just this flat spot. So I had a customer tell me about them. We started shipping these out and I had a customer tell me about them. And I said, well, shoot, I guess we're going to have to figure out what's going on. So we stopped selling anti-rocker wheels. We didn't send any to shops and we stopped shipping them to people who have already pre-ordered. And I sent an email and said, hey, if you uh, have already received your anti-rocker wheels, feel free to skate them. They're perfectly fine. But they're going to wear faster than we had anticipated. We are going to be sending you replacements as soon as we get this fixed. There's no safety issue. They're grinding wheels, so they're going to grind super fast. They actually slide super fast, but as a result, they also wear down super fast. So everybody who already has them, keep your any rocker wheels. I will be sending out new ones as soon as we get them fixed. So I've tried two different urethanes since then. And I haven't been able to find that magic mixture that we used for our samples. I have the original urethane coming tomorrow. It should be here on Thursday. And that is the urethane that we made our samples with. The negative to using that is when you're pouring urethane, you only have so much time to actually mix the urethane and pour it into the mold so that it will start hardening. The amount of time that I have with that sample urethane wasn't very long which means that my efficiency for making wheels is gonna be slower than my efficiency for the production urethane. Now that might be a good thing, not that my production is going to be better, but the faster curing might mean that the urethane is better. And obviously based on the samples, that the, the wheels that we've been testing, the old urethane is much better. <laughs> So I'm going to see what we can do. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get them tomorrow with enough time that I'm going to be able to pour a few wheels and then I'll be able to test them this weekend. Fingers crossed. I always feel horrible when I ship out a product and it doesn't work the way that I had planned and the way that I had promised. So again, I apologize to everybody out there who purchased the Chroma anti-rocker wheels. I am going to get to the bottom of it and fix it. We are currently working on making them better. Uh, anybody out there who's been looking for the Chroma any rocker wheels, that's the story. There's, uh, there's some issues with the urethane. We're going to be working on it and we're going to start selling them again as soon as we can fix them. But I don't want to send a product out there that doesn't live up to my expectations. And this wear is way too fast for the way that I skate and for the money that you're going to be paying for these. So that's the way that it is with the anti rocker wheels. Um, hope to have a good update for you at the next episode of Gear Talk in two weeks. Uh, but for now, I don't know, cross your fingers, send good vibes, think happy thoughts for this new urethane uh, so that uh, I can start pouring in production again. Um, after doing all those tests and skating anti-rocker, I did get to skate big wheels again. 
Um, so I've been skating the Matt Lyon 80 millimeter wheels on the 80 millimeter compass Blue Ridge frames. These are the frames that um, I designed earlier last year, released earlier this year. Um, they are an 80 millimeter UFS frame. We also make a 72 millimeter UFS frame. This is really just for people who want to go out and skate around their neighborhood, want to go out and skate around their town, but don't want to buy a dedicated big wheel skate. Now, there's nothing wrong with a dedicated big wheel skate. So if I go big wheeling, I absolutely love the Power Slide Next. This is an amazing skate, four by 90. These are amazing, amazing wheels, amazing wheelbase. This boot is great. The 45 degree ratchet buckle is great. This is a killer setup if you wanna go big wheeling. But if you don't wanna spend three, 400 bucks on another setup, if you've already got an aggressive setup, you can just get a pair of these. They're 60 bucks. You can get a pair, a set of wheels. You know, you can get our wheels, you can get any wheels and save a little bit of money. Use the same boots that you're used to. Use that nice liner that you've invested in that fits your foot perfectly. Put these on your boots and go out and skate. And I tell you what, I had an amazing session with Dylan. Uh, my friend Dylan went skating with me and it was just so much fun just skating around the city doing some slides, doing some airs, just doing a little Machio or two. The axles are countersunk. You can see a little wax here where the skate park had a little wax on this axle. So you can see my Machio. It is just a lot of fun going on skating. And, uh, you know, whenever you put your skates on, I know for me, I always love doing aggressive. I'm kind of, that's my mindset. I want to go skate aggressive whenever I can, but don't forget that you've got wheels on your feet. It's not just jumping on a ledge. It's not just running up to a rail or skating in a mini ramp. You've got wheels on your feet, so you can go skate anywhere. You don't have to just stay at a skate park. You don't have to stay at a ledge or at a school, wherever you're sessioning. You can skate anywhere in your city. The best way to do that is with slightly bigger wheels. You don't want to go skating around town in 60 Annie Rocker. You want to skate around town with 72s or above. Uh, 72s or 80s is probably where I would start. Um, I wouldn't go too much bigger. I think 90s are probably okay on some aggressive boots. As long as you have a 45 degree strap, you should be okay. If you get up to those hundreds and 110s, I would probably stick with a dedicated skate for that. You want something light, you want something responsive. You want something with a 45 degree ratchet buckle that really cinches your foot in because you got a really tall wheelbase, really tall ride height. That means that if you come off a little bit at an angle, you could really jack up your ankle. If you're skating like Majestic 12s or REMs or something like that with 110s, definitely not worth it in my eyes. I usually recommend people stick around 72 with some flexi skates, go up to 80 if you've got a little bit of support and 90 if you want, you know, carbon or 45 degree straps. Uh, if your skate has a carbon or a 45 degree strap. Anyway, highly recommended. Um, we actually sold out of these 80s, but we have more coming with the Prime Frames. They'll be here next week. Uh, thanks everybody for the support. It's great to see more people out there skating and just enjoying putting wheels on their feet. Uh, that is a, 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 a dream that I've had a long time. It sounds silly to say, oh, it would be great if people actually skated. Uh, but we're seeing people actually skate. And uh, you know, I give a lot of credit to Cletus over at Wish for starting this big wheel aggressive kind of crossover revolution. Um, these are definitely not aggressive frames, but being that they fit on aggressive boots, it's a really nice compromise. And uh, yeah, I hope you give them a try. There's a lot of other big wheel frames out there that you can try. Uh, most important thing, just get out there and explore your city. Go out there and have fun skating. All right, uh, what else do I have? Oh, last things. So um, we got our big shipment of wheels in last week. A lot of restocking of Compass and Chroma, in, or Compass, not Chroma, Chroma shipped a couple weeks ago. Compass and Fitty Fitty wheels. Um, I do have two new wheels I wanted to show you. These are limited edition. They're going to be available for, uh, starting next week, um, they are designed to come with the prime frames. First, they are the 60 millimeter, 90A, super popular size. Uh, these 6090s are the same profile that we always do. It's this nice rounded 60. Great urethane, the 90A is really great, but instead of just using the dark gray, 
We've got a nice metallic silver. Super, super cool. And we also have a 65. So the 60 and the 65, both available next week. Uh, they have the silver metallic paint. We're only going to bring in a couple hundred of these. They are really just to celebrate the release of the prime frames. The people who have pre-ordered the ready to roll options will be getting them first. We'll be sending those out next week and then shops and then anybody else uh, who would like them. will be putting them up for order. All right. I think that is all the housekeeping. Uh, if anybody has any questions, this would be a great time to take a break and ask questions before I get into the main event. Uh, please make sure that you tag back to blading in your question so that I can see it. I'm going to get a little bit of water and scroll to the top of the comments and see if anybody has any questions. All right, let's scroll to the top. All right, Enemy UAV. Uh, just got my new Rosy Citrus. My feet are wide. Ooh, I got the right size, and it seems I have to get a different liner. Is the MyFit second skin the thinnest out there? Excellent question. Um, First of all, condolences for your feet. Um, the Majestic 12, which is the Rossi Citrus and all the others, these skates, this is the old Volo V13. Uh, it is based on the same shell. Volo was the company that was the aggressive branch of Rossi's before John Julio left Rossi's and started uh, them. So Volo was the aggressive line before Rossi's really dove into aggressive. This boot is one of the narrowest in the industry. So if you have wide feet, this is always going to be a difficult skate for you to fit. I skated these for a little bit. They were tight. They fit me fine, but they were tight. Um, I skated them with the stock liners. A lot of people switch out the liners. Uh, there are a few liners that I recommend. I do think that the cream of the crop is the intuition. It's, it's a very expensive liner um, for compared to other liners that are available on the market. So 200 bucks is uh, what you're expecting yourself to pay uh, for a pair of Intuition liners. It's pretty expensive. Um, they are top quality. You can't really get better than Intuition. They are a ski company, ski liner company that makes really high quality inline skate liners. Have been for about five years or so. You'll find them on some of the FR skates and some of the uh, them skates. I've skated them and they weren't really my size. I tried a pair that were my size and I felt like they fit me nicely. Um, I don't know that for me, my level of skating, they were really worth the $200 expense, but I'm not a huge liner guy. So I kind of have easy feet. Um, if you have a wide foot though, it might be a good liner for you so that it does offer a little bit of protection, but it still allows a bigger foot to get into a smaller shell. Another option is the Rossi's RL1. Um, I have them here. These are the Rossi's RL1. They are in my them 908 communities now. So these are about the same price as the Intuition. They're 180 bucks, so you're not going to really save any money getting these versus the Intuition. If you're looking at a $200 liner, this is in the running, but really it's about the same ballpark as getting an Intuition. 20 bucks isn't going to make or break you if you're already planning on spending this much. So very similar characteristics, a very thin, thin uh, cuff area, thin midsole, thin uh, front area, really nice, clean look. It's got this lacing system that, that laces your foot really comfortably into the boot. Um, I really like these liners. The biggest difference between these liners and the Intuitions, aside from um, this lacing system, is that it has a neoprene toe. The Intuition does not, and they say that is a, there's a reason for that. They want it to feel more form-fitting. For me, I like the neoprene toe because then my feet can fit all sorts of situations. If your foot doesn't fit this liner perfectly, the neoprene toe gives you another 
you know, half centimeter or so, so that you can wiggle around a little bit. I always felt like my foot was just too long to fit the intuitions. So this was a really nice compromise, but for the price, 180 bucks versus 200 bucks, it's still gonna be a very expensive liner. Um, if you aren't in the market for the R01 and you wanna spend a little bit less, like 100 bucks or so, the Ro uh, Rain V3 uh, is probably your best bet. There are two options now. There's the Rain V3 and the Rain V3 HT. The Rain V3 is kinda of hard to find now, um, I have a pair over here. These are the Rain V3. These were the original Rain V3s. I don't know that they make them like this anymore. But these were really nice liners. There's a lot more padding up in the cuff area, but this down um, foot area is nice and thin. So that would be really nice for um, downsizing if your foot was a little big. Very similar construction to the RL1, different materials, but it does have the neoprene toe. It does have the lacing system. So it's a very comparable liner. These were like 80 bucks or so. I think you can get them for like 90 now. I don't know if you're gonna be able to find them though. But these were really nice liners. Um, they re-released them as the HT, which you can find in the Shimas. And I think some other skates. I'm not sure. Do the Hendersons come with the Rain V3 HT? I know they sell them aftermarket, so that might be the way to do it. This is a very similar design to this. Even though it looks a little different, you can see that the lines are very similar. Very similar construction, different materials used on this one. I think the production Rain V3 HT is a better quality material than the Shima Rain V3 HT. This is fine, it just feels a little cheaper. Um, big difference is this has a V-cut in the back, so you can see this area back here is called the V-cut. Gives your ankle a little bit more flexibility when you're getting down low on grinds and such. This has the high top, so it is a bit taller, hmm, not that much taller. They say HT, but it's not that much taller. It's just not V-cut. So this goes all the way to the top versus being a V-cut back there. Um, you were right in saying that the second skin from MyFit is also a good option. I don't have any of those here, but I've heard really good things. I've held them. I've never skated them. They feel like they're really well made. I love MyFit liners. I think they're by far the most top quality liner that you can get OEM, like originally in your skate. Um, they're really high quality liners. So, Highly recommend the uh, the MyFit line. I haven't tried the second skins, but I would assume that they're pretty high quality. There are a lot of good options out there. You're going to have some trouble though trying to fit into those Majestic 12s. So they're just really narrow. Um, I wish you all the best. I don't know that there's many solutions that you have. Um, if you still find that it's hurting, um, you can definitely sell those on Blade Trade or on some other Facebook group. Um, because there are always people out there looking for Majestic 12s, especially if the sizing is wrong. Um, but yeah, they're amazing skates. I just wish that they were a little bit wider. Uh, great question. Thank you for asking. Um, Eddie F and D. Hi, Lob. Finally managed to join live once after a while. Have you seen Lee's uh, faceted sole plates? It's really cool. I have not. Um, I've seen some of his work with uh, frames, uh, but I haven't seen the sole plates. I'll have to see if I can find those. They uh, are probably, probably on his Facebook. So I'll see if I can find them. Um, he's doing some really good stuff. So I love this era that we're in where people are making their own stuff. It's just so inspirational, you know? That was... When I started out, you know, 20 years ago or so, that was the thing that I always wanted to do. And we never had the materials to do it. But now, you know, 3D printing is pretty easy to get your head around. Um, you can do small production runs with, uh, you know, if you're doing t-shirts, you can do direct to garment stuff and do really small runs. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity out there for really clever people to start businesses and chase their ideas, so. Thank you for uh, mentioning it. I'll see if I can find his stuff. 
Uh, Anuj. Hey, Anuj. Not gear related, but what's your favorite switch up? Favorite that you've done and favorite that you've seen. Also, can we do one for this month's community challenge? Um, you can definitely do one for the community challenge. It is your favorite trick. And if the trick is a switch up, you're good to go. The favorite switch up for me, the one that I, I don't do switch ups very often. So I like to do the old Josh Petty uh, backside to mistrial. I always liked that switch up. When I was growing up, we would do soul to soul. That was kind of a big switch up for me. More, I think, based on Tom Fry in, was it Mad Beef? He was doing soul to soul, switch soul to soul. Um, so we kind of modeled ourselves after Tom. Like Tom was one of our idols growing up. So definitely uh, love watching Tom. Soul to backside. I mean, that was a classic that I've done many, many times on rails and such. I used to do Mizu to front, switch front side. That was a good, uh, good trick because, you know, you only had like five tricks. So it was like, how do you do with them? Well, I've got a soul, I've got a Mizu, I've got a front side and a back side. All right, let's mix them together and let's do switch ups. Um, now I love doing Royale step through budget, um, uh, star grind. That's one of my favorite grinds when I can land it properly. I've done it a few times for my birthday, uh, edits. I don't do them very often. But, you know, landing a Royale and then picking up that front foot and then stepping through to star. I love that even though it's a budget switch up, it's super hard and complicated and it just feels so good when you lock it clean. Um, favorite one that I've seen. I mean, anything that Eugen does is pretty intense. Uh, just doing, you know, fish 360 fish or fish 180 switch fish. Like he's just so good on rails. It's really fun to watch. But. I'm not a huge fan of switch ups. There's a reason I don't do them. Um, I prefer just locking a nice grind and just riding it out versus trying to dance my way down the rail. Um, again, I'm not good enough to do it, but I don't aspire to do it. It's not something that I, you know, hope that someday I'll be able to do that because it's so cool. It's something that I'm not super interested in, even though I'm not good at it. Um, great question. Uh, I haven't answered that question ever. So yeah, definitely. Uh, Nice to uh, nice to think about, uh, Mr. Darren twenty five. Hey Darren, Mr. Darren, um, with skateboarding making the jump to the Olympics, do you think aggressive skating could be next at some point in the future? That's a weird one. I think there's potential. Um, I think with more people skating nowadays, I think there's more potential now than there ever was, um, but. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what the Olympics thinks of skateboarding. You know, skateboarding for me, as soon as they stopped promoting vert and started promoting street, it became really difficult for the public to follow. And that's the problem that inline street always has. You know, if you show your wife or your significant other or your partner or your friend who doesn't skate two different grinds on the same rail, they'll say, you know, the Pam Beasley, it's the same picture, right? They don't know the difference between a Royale and a Torque, you know, a, a back farve. Like, it, they're jumping on the rail and they're facing that way. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Your feet, you didn't see their feet. The feet would, oh, you missed it. He's all torqued. Let me rewind it. They don't care about any of that. So, you know, watching like Simone Biles do some crazy, crazy flips, that is what people love. And that's not something that you're going to see in the skateboarding Olympics event. Now there's some amazing skateboarders, but I fear that it's going to be a very technical, heavy sort of thing. And I don't think people are gonna really get into that. Um, what they're doing with Fees is super interesting. And if you haven't already, um, there's a competition primarily in Europe, but they also go through Asia. And I don't know if there's been any in the US, but primarily in Europe, that's the Fees F-I-S-E events. They have this, um, it's, it's like a BMX course, but they do a roller, uh, an inline roller. I don't know what it's called, inline roller, something like that. They do an inline event. So they'll let us go out there and skate. And this is where, you know, people like CJ and Diaby and uh, Roman and Joe Atkinson and like the really big high flying guys, um, they're able to go out there and just destroy that course. You know, they're doing the big airs and they're doing the full flip things and they're doing boosts up to back, you know, Savannah on the big ledge and things like that. 
they're making it look amazing. And I think that is really hard to do in skateboarding. So if skateboarding doesn't do great this year, I don't think it's because people don't like skateboarding. I think it's because skateboarding is hard to portray for the general audience without a vert ramp. On a vert ramp, you can say, wow, he went really big. And wow, he did all those flips. And that is something that normal people can understand. But the difference between a heel flip and a kick flip, or a kick flip 180 and a you know 360 flip or whatever, tri flip, tray flip, whatever they're called. I don't know the differences between skateboarding tricks, but I know enough to know that there are very technical details that the public is going to miss. So I don't know. I think it's going to be really interesting. Um, do I think that we should be in the Olympics? Probably not. It doesn't take me as that sort of sport. Um, I think the X Games, you know, maybe. Uh, but I think having our own circuits would be cool. I think we just need to get some sponsors so that these people who are out there busting their butts every day to win these prizes can get paid. Great question. Uh, Thomas J, let's imagine you're going to play a pickup game of hockey tomorrow. What skates are you grabbing? So first of all, I'm assuming you're talking about roller hockey. I don't, I don't know um, what I would bring for roller hockey skates. If I were, I would probably bring the next if I were doing roller hockey, the next 90s. Um, I feel I could get good acceleration there and some good coast, maybe something smaller, something with 80s. Um, I always like a little bit more acceleration. I tried the hundreds on the rain hockey skates and they were fine, but it wasn't a big thing. For ice, um, I only have one pair of ice skates. It's funny, I have way too many rollerblades, but I don't have a lot of ice hockey skates. I only have one pair. And that is my Easton 11, 11Ks, I think they're called, um, from like 10 years ago. They have the Reebok pump in them. They're the Reebok 11Ks. They have the pump in them and everything. They're amazing skates. They cost me a grip, but they fit perfectly. They were heat molded um, and uh, super light. They feel you know, like the blade is just attached to my foot and I'm just out there skating. So that's what I would bring uh, for roller. I'd probably bring my next and I'd probably put on some 4x80 frames, even the short ones, the 243s. I think 243s with 4x80 would probably be the way to go. Great question. All right. I think we are done with that. Let me get to the main event. So um, I love getting new skates. The most important thing for me is that I'm able to go out there and skate these skates and tell people all about my experience. I've skated every skate on this wall pretty much. Um, and I have a lot of videos out that explain the differences between each of the skates. Because right now we don't have a ton of skate shops and we don't have a ton of really educated people at skate shops who can tell the difference between a Rossi's Majestic 12 or a USD Sway. What's the difference? Oh, well, they're both plastic boots. Okay, what else? Well, they both have removable liners. Yeah, most do. Uh, well, one of them has a, I don't know, what's the difference? Well, I wanna be able to tell the difference. I wanna be able to make these videos for people who can reference it before they buy their skates and they can say what's good about these skates they can learn from me and it's just my experience i'm an average skater going out there doing average tricks i feel like i represent the norm of skating so if you're out there skating right now definitely if you're better than me great um, i don't know that you're going to learn a lot from my reviews i think that most of the people out there who are really good can skate any skate and they just kill it. So this is not for you. This is for people who need a little edge, who need a little help with uh, with Royales because, you know, maybe wish frames on Majestic 12s are too steep and your knees can't handle it so you can't get boot down. Maybe you need a slightly wider sole plate and a slightly deeper groove so that you can get boot down on your Royales. There is no shame in that. That's where I'm at. So I'm 44 years old. I've been skating for a long time. I think I'm good enough to know what the difference is between skates, but not so good that I forget the differences between skates and I can make everything look easy. If a skate sucks to me, you'll see how bad I skate in them. And I'll let you know that this is what I'm experiencing and this is what I don't like about skates. I have skated almost every single skate available. Um, and there's only a few that are left. This is one of them. Super excited to finally get myself a pair uh, so that I can go out there and see what the difference is 
um, and report back to you. These are the new God's FM3s. So this is the box that they came in. Oh, it is a big box. A little bit of uh, ingodswetrust.com. I really like this box, actually. I think it's really... It's funny that they put UFS on things still. I do as well, but it's funny that they put it on UFS. It's also interesting that they say power slide through gods. Um, I got the completes. So these completes are $380. You can get them boot only for $340. And here we are. So they come with the boots in these nice, I love that PowerSlide's doing this now. They're doing a lot of reusable, um, avoiding the plastic. These used to come in plastic, but this is like a fabric uh, that's probably recycled, probably reusable, but this is just to protect them because they are a leather skate and you don't want that to get all ruined. I'm gonna put the box down. All right, here we go. Cyclica gel, of course. Oof. And here we are. So these are the Gods FM3s. This is Frankie Morales' Pro Skate. This is his third version of the God Skates. The first ones were red and black. The second ones were white with black. And then these are the third ones. They are white with black or white with red, I should say. They are based on the carbon free. So the USD carbon free is the skate that Frankie got a lot of pro skates after. Uh, if you look for Frankie Morales USD carbon free, you'll see, I don't know, five different skates that he got over the years all Jordan inspired, just like this one being Jordan inspired. They look amazing. They are probably the best looking skates. Definitely, in my opinion, the best looking carbon skates out there. This is not my favorite look. I love the USD Carbon Frankie skates. This one's okay. Um, I'm not a huge Jordan fan, but I see a lot of my friends who love Jordans just drooling over these skates or buying them and just this is the only skates that they're going to get from now on. They are based on the carbon free. So what that means is that they are an internal plastic uh, shell with a uh, skin, a leather skin that goes on the outside and an integrated liner. Let me start opening it up and I'll show you all about it. Buckle out. All right, so it does have a 45 degree strap. Really nice quality buckles. Nice quality strap too, looks really nice. Loosen these up, get my hand up in there. Tell you all about what I'm feeling. I love the attention to detail with these God skates. You can see the, on the tongue, you can see that it says the gods up front and then Morales all the way down. I just love those little things. Oh, and then the back, you can see the, the little patch in the bank, back with the Frankie Morales. Again, they really, really sweated the details with the skate. Frankie's signature on the side. Really nicely, nicely done. Feels super stiff though. It's like I have to, like it's super tightly laced, so I have to untie it a lot. You know, I need to unloosen one of the things. Can't even get the, can't even get the, uh, let me take the laces off a little bit. Yeah, if you tighten them all the way up to the top, it's really hard to get the tongue out, which might be difficult to get your foot in if you cannot. Loosen the tongue. All right. Padding. So as I said, this is an integrated liner. So unlike traditional skates that have a plastic shell, 
and then there's a liner that you can put in your shell and you pull out. This has an integrated liner. What that means is this liner is all one piece. There is a shell on the inside that is made of plastic, some plastic, I don't know what the mix is, but it's a plastic nylon something that goes up here, traces down here, goes down around to the toe, back to the other side, up around, and then down back here. Then there is material that goes on top that lets you tie your laces tight. And you can see the flex here. When you tie your laces tight, you put your foot in there and you tie your laces tight, you're wearing a shoe with a lot more support on the sides, obviously, but you're wearing a shoe. And that means that this is going to feel super good on your foot. So if you're curious about some skates, you know, maybe they have a little bit less room vertically inside the skate, like the USD Aon traditionally is a little tight vertically for some people. You put your foot in there and you can feel the top of the shell on the top of your toes. That's not a good feeling. With this, you might have that problem a little bit, but you know, it'll break in because this is a leather, I'll say leather, I don't know what material it is, but it's a leather material. If it doesn't fit your foot perfectly, you can just loosen it up, loosen up the laces. If you want it to be a little bit tighter, you just tighten the laces. And it is super responsive because it's just like a shoe. You slide your foot in there, you can loosen it, you can tighten this 45 degree step, keep your foot sucked to the back, tighten this buckle up, and it should feel like a super supportive, like a basketball shoe on your foot. Um, this red area works kind of as a skid protector. So if you fall and you put your toes down, this will get rubbed first and then the white leather. Obviously that is the big concern most people have with skinned skates is what happens if I fall? Well, if you fall, you are going to rub on the toe and you're going to mess up the toes. That is just something that you're gonna to have to deal with. This skin is not removable, it's not replaceable. If you rub through this toe, you're out of luck. You're not gonna have any way to fix it. Um, as soon as you start seeing any rubbing or anything, you should probably put some shoe goo on it. They make this clear, like plastic rubbery sort of stuff called shoe goo that you can put on it and it will protect the toes. I fall a lot. So for me, I think I'm gonna rub here. I've fallen a bunch on my USD carbons and I've rubbed a lot here. Kind of sucks, but that is what you get for getting a skin skate. Uh, one of the negatives to it. This cuff looks like the same cuff that comes on the USD carbons. I have my USD carbons here. It's actually different. So it is a similar look, but you can see there's a lot more breathable holes on this cuff. I don't know if that's for aerodynamics or more flex. It might be more flex. So you can see here, there's this little area here. I don't know if that makes it a stiffer cuff or a flexier cuff. I will definitely report back, find out and report back. This back area is not leather. This is like a rubber material. Not sure why they use a different material back here, but it's, it's a slightly different material in the back. Really nice. It feels really high quality. It feels like worth the money. Again, 380 bucks complete. You can get it boot only for 340 bucks. Boot only means that you'll get it with the sole plates and the boots and the laces and the buckles and stuff like that, but it won't come with the frame and it won't come with the wheels. This sole plate is from the USD seven. So the USD seven is a old USD skate that was my favorite skate until they discontinued it. The USD seven sole plate is nice and wide, like huge wide, almost like USD shadow wide. It is like a two knuckle width. This groove comes up really nice and high, but it doesn't cut too deep. So what that means is that when you're getting on your Royale, you don't have to get super low to still get boot down. I'll pull out the rail. So I keep this rail to illustrate how deep you need to get in groove tricks. So when you're doing Royales, 
The trick to a good Royale for me is trying to get boot down. You want two points of contact. If you're just kind of balancing like this, you're not really on a Royale. You're going to slip out. You're going to either slip back this way and get bite and fall to the front side, or you're going to slip out this way and you're going to slip out. So what you want is two points of contact. You want this edge of the frame and you want this edge of the sole plate. And you can see <laughs> there is not much angle. This is boot down. There's not much angle here with these feather light fours and this sole plate. To compare, let me show you these USD carbons. These are USD carbons with the USD carbon sole plate and the 5050 prime frame. So much steeper of an angle. Now for me, I love this angle. I think this is the right angle for me. These will be much more stand up. So when I do my Royales, I'm not going to have to get as low and it's going to affect my style a little bit. That's where the style comes in. So long as you can get boot down, I think you'll have the support that you need to hold on to the grinds. If sometimes you have a tall frame and a tight, uh, tight groove or a narrow groove and a narrow sole plate, you'll have to get much lower. So, you know, the balance will be much lower like this. And that's when it becomes more of a knee game, a leg game where you got to really squat down to balance yourself out so that you don't wash out. Absolutely no problems with that here. Now I will note that colors don't match. You know, this color red is different than this color red, of course, because red is a really difficult color to color match and it's a different material altogether. This is a shiny leather and this is a matte finish uh, plastic. It also doesn't fit perfectly. You can see the edges here and here as a reminder that this sole plate really isn't designed for this boot. This sole plate is designed for a wider boot, the USC 7. It fits on this boot just fine, but it's definitely not designed for it. If you looked at the USD Carbon, you see the spacing on the USD Carbon. This is the sole plate that's supposed to come with that boot. Very clean. USC 7 is not. I'm getting to the frames. So these are the Fluid 4 from Kaiser. These are my favorite Annie Rocker frames. They are a nice material, super fast and glassy grind. I got these again on my USD 7s and absolutely loved skating them. It's a super deep groove, nice chamfer, so you won't have any problems breaking them in. You can jump on ledges the first day and do nice boot down royales. They are a super deep groove designed for any rocker. So you can see this groove area from the H block, the point at which it actually starts to meet the frame and go flat with the frame. These are 47 millimeter wheels, 46 millimeter wheels. If you were riding a 58 millimeter wheel, you would have massive wheel bite. These are not designed for skating flat. If you try to skate these frames flat, you will just get wheel bite all day long. This groove is not designed for that. This groove is designed to have a nice big split and little wheels so that you can jump on big ledges, consistent ledges, no problems with any wheel bite or any grind issues, but don't try to skate these flat. They will not work. I, I say that they will not work. I'm sure somebody's gonna prove me wrong. Good for you. They're not designed for flat. Don't skate them flat. There are much better frames out there. The Fluid 5, much better frame for skating flat. Um, they do come with the God's 46 millimeter wheels and the God's, what are these, 60s? Oh, geez. I think they're 60s. 6088s. Um, of note, these aren't the same God's wheels that you can buy from Undercover or from AEND. These are a different material. Um, I don't know how good they're going to be. The profile is different. Typically, the 60 millimeter wheel from AEND that you get from God's is a rounded profile. This is a kind of like an aggressive profile. It's got a flat area with like a chamfer on the edges. 
I have a feeling these are going to kind of feel like bubble gum, which means kind of sluggish, a little bit of bounce, but not a lot of grip. If you try to do any turns or anything, you'll start sliding out a little bit more. I'm going to see, uh, this might be the first thing that I replace though, is the outside wheels. I think the anti rocker wheels are going to be just fine. Uh, anti rocker wheels again, nice hard urethane shouldn't be a problem, but these don't look like the best quality wheels for skating long distances or skating around rougher terrain, especially at 88A. But we will see how they hold up. Um, I do love the colorway though. The red really looks nice. Uh, again, it's a different red than the boot than the sole plate, but red is a really difficult color to color match. Um, so that's pretty much it with these skates. Again, these are based on the carbon free and the carbon is my favorite skate. So it will be really interesting to me to see what these feel like doing all my normal grinds, my normal airs, my normal spins, my normal style of skating. They are supposed to be a little bit more flexible. So the carbon is going to be really stiff. This carbon free I've heard is a little bit more flexible which should help me with some grinds, but it might also hinder me when I'm trying to carve around bowls or transitions, get a little bit more flexy. I do love the carbon feel, the responsiveness that I get with a carbon, especially with an aluminum frame, like a core system frame, like a prime frame, but we will see what they feel like. I'm gonna skate these at Durham this weekend, which is my normal first skate session spot. Uh, do a few grinds on the ledge, do some airs, do some, you know, wall rides and rails and such and see how they hold up to just normal skating um i hope that you will subscribe so that you can see that video this saturday and uh i will report back in two weeks on gear talk what i think i usually skate these skates for about a month unless i fall in love with them in which case i usually skate them for a lot longer um i can see myself falling in love with these skates i fell in love with the usc sways and i skated them for a long time much longer than i had intended I think I could do the same with these. I think they look great, assuming that they fit my feet good. I think it's got everything that I love. It's got a nice USC 7 sole plate, the nice fit with a 45 degree strap. Could be a match made in heaven, but we will see. Um, make sure to stay tuned and find out. Um, thanks again to the Patreon supporters for helping us with the funds we do run ads on the YouTube, which helps with getting some money for new skates to review, but we also uh, appreciate our Patreon supporters helping us get the funds for these for review. Um, we really appreciate all of your support out there. The review should be in about a month, maybe a month and a half. Um, I'll be skating these for about a month before I really know what's up. I'm gonna try different frames on them. I might even try big wheels uh, just to see what they feel like. Great. All right, um, if anybody has any questions on the skates, if I can measure anything or give, if I missed anything, I would love to answer your questions. Please uh, leave a comment on the live stream. Make sure that you tag back to blading. If you're watching this after the fact, make sure you leave a comment in the video. I would love to answer your question. Just leave a comment. I read all of the comments. If you got questions, I do my best to answer them as accurately as possible. Um, going to get a little water and scroll through the live stream and see if there are any questions I can answer. Oh, Octavio Rios already with the question, um, which I must have missed already. What is the weight difference, the fit difference? So I don't know the fit because I haven't tried them on yet. I did bring my scale. So let me do this. Let me take the frames off of these carbon freeze. I will measure them and then I will, ooh, it's going to be hard to get those in there. And then I will uh, do the same for the carbons and I will measure them and tell you what the boot only is like. And then you can go ahead and put on whatever frames you want. Most frames are fairly light. The real weight is in the wheels and the bearings. There's not a huge difference between frames, but if you use the same frames on different boots, you'll just get used to that weight. There are big differences between boots though. So I think this will be a really nice test. All right, through the miracle of UFS, two bolts and you've got a nice boot. All right, the scale is on. I'm gonna measure in grams. 
because it is easier to measure in grams consistently. So the USD, sorry, uh, God's boot only is 1302, 1302. Now let's try the USD carbon. So these are the 2018 USD carbons. They might have changed over the years. I'm not certain there were the brown ones last year and there's a new black one this year that looks very similar to this one. I don't know that they've made much in the way of upgrades or tweaks over the years, but keep in mind that these are the 2018s. So measurements might be slightly different. These also have the USD carbon sole plate. So sole plates might be a little different. We can measure the sole plates too as well, if you'd like. All right, so USD carbon is 1190. The gods is, ooh, oops. 1302. So about a hundred grams heavier, about a hundred grams heavier for the gods carbon free versus the USD carbon. Let's measure these sole plates. Now I did drill out some of the sole plates so that I could fit the wish frames. This sole plate feels like it's a lot lighter though. 240 for the sole plate. Two eighty for the sole plate, so forty grams different in the sole plates. So you're not looking at much, but this boot is about a hundred grams heavier than this, and I can feel it. I can feel the difference between these two boots. It's not much though. These are both super light boots. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think you'll be able to tell the difference between the two. Great question. I'm glad I brought the scale. I brought it just in case. And then the first question after I'm done with the skates is about the weight. So it's perfect. Um, Greg Elwood, how are the carbon plates compared to the sevens after that round of the park? You know, I prefer the seven. It's a slightly wider sole plate. Not by much, but slightly wider. The design is fairly similar. This is a little bit more square. This USC seven sole plate is a little bit more square. I feel maybe it's about the same there. Yeah. Yeah. It's about the same. The groove is really the big difference. You can see the groove, the USC seven sole plate is in red and the USD carbon sole plate is in black. The groove is nice and tight with the USD carbon and it's a much wider groove with the USC seven. Um, it also comes in a little bit closer on the USD carbon versus this one, which is a little bit further out, means that you have to get a little bit lower to get boot down on a USD carbon versus a USD seven sole plate. But between the two of them, they're really great sole plates. Um, I prefer the USD seven, I think, but I could definitely go either way. I think they're both really high quality. Great question. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, enemy UAV asks, thanks for the help on the liners. Glad I could help. Um, gave me some opinions on wheels, um, softer wheels, a good idea. Looking for a smoother ride from my skate park and around my community. Yes. Um, I'm a huge fan of softer wheels. I love 88A. Um, anything harder than 92 and you're really looking for trouble. Like, I don't think anybody recommends skating anything harder than a 92. People who do like 95s sometimes, you'll see 95s. Those are usually for the inside. So if you've, if you wanted to skate a flat setup, sometimes you'll put a harder wheel on the inside so that you get less wheel bite. And then you put a softer wheel on the outside so you get more cruise and a little bit more grip. That's fairly typical nowadays. And that's why you see a 95A. 92 is fairly standard. We make a 90 that I think is a really nice compromise between being hard and soft, a little bit of bounce, but it still has good durability. 
for me, I like a softer wheel, but it really just depends on where you're skating, how big you are, what sort of stuff you skate. You know, if all you're doing is skating and grinding a ledge, it's probably going to last a long time, regardless of which wheels you're going to have. If you like doing airs, if you like pumping around bowls, maybe a softer wheel will be a little bit more cushiony, better on your knees, but it might not be as fast as a harder wheel. The nice thing is that there are plenty of wheels out there to try. Um, try as many as you can. Um, I would definitely recommend trying some softer wheels. 88A is probably as low as I would go to start. Uh, we do make an 85A. That's a pretty soft wheel. It's nice and it's comfortable. It's kind of like the Cadillac, uh, but they will wear down faster. So be prepared to spend a little bit more buying wheels more often if you get softer wheels. They will wear down a little bit faster, but they might be a perfect ride for you. You know, I think we're kind of all at this age where we've got a little bit of disposable income. Well, some of us have this disposable income um, that we're able to buy wheels more often. We don't have to ask our parents to get wheels. So we don't get wheels that last forever. We get wheels that feel good when we're skating. And I think for me, 88A is the right compromise. I'd highly recommend giving them a try. Uh, there's a bunch of brands out there that make 88A. Great question. Um, come back, Quatse. Quatse. Uh, do you have any oxygen skates? Will we be doing any vintage OG skate videos? I do have some oxygens. They're way up there. Um, I do have a pair of oxygens. They don't fit me, uh, so I won't be skating them. I love the idea of doing some vintage uh, skate videos. I fear that if I do, they will just crumble and fall apart. So um, it might be a one and done thing. I think they're more valuable to me being on the wall so that I could take them off the wall and talk about them. I love sharing the history of skates and it's less fun to talk about skates if they're destroyed. Um, it's fun destroying them, I guess, but uh, you know, it's a fun video, but I'd rather have them for a while. Maybe if I can get duplicates of a skate and I can go out there and skate something that's vintage, I might do that. Good question though. Um, Stig's room. How do I get my hands on some crappy used roller rink blades? <laughs> I want to modify them because I'm weird. I want two pairs. My local rink won't sell them to me. That is a good question. I don't know. Um, I would assume that you would just ask. And if they sell them to you, great. Um, my bet is that they don't sell them because they don't have a lot of money to buy new ones. So they probably don't want to sell them until they're completely dead and then maybe they just throw them out. I don't know. Um, if you find a roller rink that's shutting down, maybe they'll have them. But most of the roller rinks around me are quads. So I don't know that that's what you're looking for. Maybe it is, though. I, I wish you luck with that. Denzes, what are your thoughts on the Niche Skate Co.? Um, so Niche is a brand that's been leaking some photos of some boots that they've been working on. I think the designs look pretty cool. Um, nice and clean, uh, definitely a nod to the Them 909 styling, uh, which isn't a bad thing. I think it's you know a compliment that they look very similar to that sort of boot. Uh, but they are different. Um, I don't really have an opinion until I see them in person. Um, I don't know that they're going to be in production. I've heard a lot of things, uh, uh, brands in the past that have said that they're going to release a skate or a boot or a frame or a wheel, and it just never materialized. I hope that it does. And if it does, I would love to skate them, and then I will have an opinion. But based on the renderings that I've seen and the prototypes that I've seen, it seems like they're off to a good start but it seems like they have a long way to go. You know, making skates is a very expensive endeavor. It's not just getting a mold. It's now you got to produce them. Now you got to import them from wherever you get them shipped. Now you got to store them somewhere. Now you got to figure out distribution. Like it's a lot to bring in skates and actually sell them. Uh, starting a business is not easy. So I wish them luck. I hope that they're able to come out with a new boot new boots are always welcome in the industry but so far i don't have an opinion on the boots because i haven't skated the boots 
Uh, Jessica Morgan, so thankful for these reviews. How I landed the Aeon 60s for myself and able to find a friend with Rosies who wants wider, better soul plates. Um, definitely. Thank you so much for the kind words. Um, the Aeon 60s, definitely my favorite skate for skaters who don't really know what skates to get. Um, they are oh, right here. They are a killer bargain. So if you can find the Aeons, these are the Aeon Basics. They were 230, I think, and they come out the box ready to skate. You put these on your your feet, and you've got a nice flat setup uh, with a nice sole plate, nice grinding area, and you can go out there and have as much fun. Uh, as you can before the wheels break. They don't last very long. The boots themselves are fine, but you're going to have to replace these wheels. But for 230 bucks or so, it is an amazing skate to get out there and just enjoy skating. Um, those Rossi's Majestic 12s, definitely a more narrow skate. Uh, that's something that I'm not a huge, don't have a huge problem with because my feet aren't super wide. But if you do have wide feet, it is a problem. Um, I think the fifth element is probably a good option if they were interested, but it sounds like they already got the Majestic 12. So I hope that I was able to help. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for tuning in tonight. It's a, it's a slightly different show when I do it live and uh, I'm glad that you're all here to watch and cheer me on and ask questions. All right, let's see if there are any more. Uh, Anuj, can I see the Royale angle of an Aeon 60 on the rail compared to the FM3? Yes, but I'll need to put the FM3 back together. Oh, I can get the other one. I'll get the other FM3. All right, hoping this is an FM3. Yes, this is an FM3. So here is the Royale angle for the God's FM3. And here is the Roy angle of the Aeon 60. Much deeper. Much, much deeper. Now, I would argue that this is probably the right angle. It's pretty low, but it's not crazy. This is super high. This is almost like Featherlight 3 with SL, Featherlight 3 with SL angle. Oh, it's probably even taller than that. It's probably not even as low as this. This is lower than those FM3s. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting skate. I hope that, um, I don't know. I don't know how long I'm going to last with these frames because that angle is so low. Uh, or, I'm sorry, so high that it's just not going to feel good doing Royales, you know? Like, I'm going to get too much on the uh, sole plate. And when I do Royales, I'm going to be more on sole plate and not even touching the frame. Which isn't a problem because it does have this big scoop. But that's not what I want to do. I want to have that two points of contact. That's, that's where you get your stability doing those group tricks. We will see. But, yes, it is a very low... Uh, low groove, so you don't have to get very boot down at all. Very get low, you don't have to get low at all to get boot down on those Royals. Great question. Um, Eddie, hey Eddie, uh, will juice blocks fit inside the prime frames? They'll fit, uh, but they'll spin. The groove is, uh, sorry, the split is much wider and the distance between the H block and the axle is wider. So we wanted to make sure that you could ride flat 60s um, and the juice box are designed for 58s. So it won't work, um, but as I always say, you can design whatever walls you want. So you could design yourself some prime frame style walls that fit your 250 or your 270 millimeter skates. Uh, and you can put your juice box in there and have a great time. I hope that somebody does. I hope that they design a wall that's just designed for juice blocks. I think that would be really awesome. Uh, City Blades, do the souls screw in on the gods? Nope. 
they don't screw in at all. I mean, the UFS bolts, obviously, but it's a sandwich situation. These, these screw holes are just holes. They're designed for the USD-7, which had that countersunk area inside that was super supportive. You know, I don't think there's a problem with having two bolts for support, but it sure is better if you've got four more for the sole plate. I don't know. Um, again, this sole plate is not designed for this gate. It's a really weird, I hate when they put things on there and there's like, a, like you know, you get a car and the car has a, a cover for a button, like you've got the hazard lights and you've got like your, your seat warmer or something like that. And then there's blank and then there's like, you know, cruise control or whatever. And you're like, what goes there? Like, what's that button for? Like, it's probably some upgrade for, I don't know, heated windshield wipers or some craziness like that. These holes should have a way that you could mount them on, but they don't. They're just an afterthought. They're a, oh, one day we might, but I guarantee they will have a sole plate that removes it because they're not doing the USC 7 anymore, right? So get rid of these holes, do this full time. It's a great sole plate. That's my guess. Great question. Great to see you, Drew. Uh, Otavio, I thought the weight difference was going to be way bigger. Absolutely. So did I. Um, it's almost exactly the same. 100 grams or so. Not a big deal. I think carbon is lighter. It's not that lighter, though. It's not like a feather versus an anvil, you know. It's just a little bit lighter. The biggest difference between carbon and carbon-free is the flex. The carbon is going to be super stiff in the areas that you want it to be stiff. The carbon-free it's not going to be as stiff. So that's the huge difference. If you want a lighter skate, doesn't really matter between the two. If you want a more flexible skate, definitely get the carbon free or the gods versus the USD carbon. Uh, da, 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 da. Adam Tomlinson, thoughts on the new icon skates that Frankie is going for? Um, I don't know anything about Frankie and Icon. I know Montre skates with Icon, as does Beefree and Sasha and a few others. Um, Icon looks super interesting. Um, it looks to me, the skate that they released or that they shared, looks to me like a carbon-free with a removable liner, which I absolutely love the idea of. Um, I think the biggest problem that people have with carbon skates is sometimes they don't fit their feet and you're kind of screwed. So what do you do? Well, you have a liner and you can put in whatever liner you want. That liner fits your foot perfectly. It fits in the boot. And there you go. Um, I think that's super interesting. Not a huge fan of the design that they leaked. It looks a little bit too much. Um, I like a more clean aesthetic. You know, that skate had a lot of lettering and numbers on the side. It just seemed like it was a little too much for me. Um, but again, I, I refuse to, uh, I, I refrain from passing judgment uh, on skates until I can hold them and skate them. Um, I think Icon looks really interesting though. I hope that they release something boot-wise soon uh, so we can see their full line. We've seen a lot of teasing, uh, but we haven't seen a lot of product yet. Uh, Eric Lopez, what are your next plans for the balance frame colors? Balance frames, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff coming in balance frames. We're not just doing prime frames. Um, we're going to have new balance frames end of this year. Um, production is taking a little bit long because we're prioritizing the prime frames, but we haven't forgotten to balance balance frames. Um, some announcements in the next month, maybe, um, that we'll share with you our plans for the balance frame. Stay tuned. Hey, Alex, damn, I'm late. Yes, you can't use the overslept excuse this time. I know every single time we do a live stream, you just woke up because you're in Hawaii and everything. I totally get that. It's 9 p.m. Eastern, so you didn't oversleep this time. But it's good to have you here. Um, I hope that you're doing well. Mahalo and all that. Um, Killbot. 350. I have prime frames coming my way. Thank you for the support. Um, I'm sorry that they're taking so long. I truly am sorry that they're taking so long. I have orders in the back that are just sitting there for months waiting on prime frames. So I am super sorry that they're taking so long. 
Um, how would I go about getting Justin Thursday designed walls? Well, that's a great question. There's two ways that you can get replacement walls for the prime frames. Um, the core system is a system. So the prime walls are the ones that we're releasing first, but you can take the prime walls off and you can put different walls on your core system. It's not a great illustration with these. Did I take them off? Oh, I guess it is a good illustration. So you can see this is the prime frame. This has the core system and the prime wall. So this top section is aluminum. So this is an extruded aluminum, 6100 series aluminum. And this is super rigid, super strong, super stiff. It goes in wheel one and wheel four. And what that means is this whole area is plastic. It also means that this whole area is removable. So you can take off these two axles, you can pull off this, uh, this wall, and you can put on whatever walls you want. So this is a replaceable system. What's great about that is now we've open sourced it so that other designers can come out with their walls and they can 3D print their walls and they can sell their walls so they can start a frame wall industry, which I'm super excited of because this is how I got my start in design and being able to give back to people who are pushing the limits of design and have ideas but don't have distribution or the business side, now they have a way that they can sell their walls. So there's two ways that we're going to do it. One is we're going to have the Core Frame Market. You can go to coreframemarket.com, learn more about the system and download all of the information that you need to be a developer. When the frames come in, that will also launch with walls that you can purchase. So walls at launch are going to be 50 bucks for a pair, not including hardware, 50 bucks for a pair, and you'll be able to get a bunch of different walls. I think we've got, I don't know, a handful of walls that are already up there um, that we haven't launched, but when they launch from a variety of designers who have different designs and ideas for what makes a good wall, you'll be able to purchase them there. We will 3D print them as the orders come in and we will send them out. So those are printed in-house or through our network of printers, depending on where you are in the world. If you want to support a designer directly and have a few different options of frames that they provide, uh, you can go to their website. So from the core frame market, you'll be able to link directly to that designer's uh, shop and you'll be able to purchase any of their frames in different colors and different designs um, that you'd like. I'm sure that Justin, as well as other designers, will have a bunch of different colors available, a bunch of different designs available. The core frame market is only going to have a few colors and a single design for each designer. We want to make sure that we focus on more different designers so that people can discover designers versus supporting individual designers and just buying all of the Justin Thursday walls, right? Which are amazing walls, but let's let you discover other designers. And if you like his walls, you can go to his site. If you like somebody else's wall, you can go to their site. This will all go live as soon as the frames land. So I'm hoping next week, which means that we'll probably have the market live the following week. Uh, give me a week to get through orders and then I'll push the, uh, push the publish button uh, on the Squarespace site so that it will go live. Uh, then we will start printing and uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, get out there and, and try all the different walls and support all of these amazing designers. Uh, let's see. Otavio again. Hey, uh, would you ever try the Sam Croft Aeon or are you not interested in them being too similar? I'm not really interested because they are too similar to the other Aeons. I've skated Aeons. I think the Aeons are great. Um, I don't know that I'm going to learn much by skating the Sam Crofts. I think the big difference is they have a nice lacing system. I think that is a huge upgrade, but it's not going to make or break the skate. Um, I would rather save my money and get something that I haven't skated versus getting something that I have in a different colorway. Uh, Otavio again, maybe the gods is foreshadowing the new pro model for Tim who will use the USC seven soul plates. You know, Tim's, um, Tim, ooh, what's his name? Oh, I can't think of his name. Franken. No, maybe Tim Franken, maybe, um, 
They had a pro model for gods that looked like it was the USC 7. Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm tired of all the teasing in the shadows. Just show me the friggin' skates. Don't list them if you're not going to show them. Um, I, it just doesn't doesn't do me any good. So until I can see them, I don't know. But yes, uh, if they're going to use the USC 7 for gods, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, then they would have a high end with the carbon freestyle and a low end plastic with the USC 7. Um, and then finally, last question, uh, Aaron Christensen, if you made a 50, 50 boot, would you do a soft or a hard boot? Probably soft boot. That's what I like. Um, you know, my USD carbons feel good. The reason why I like them is I always hear from people that the fit is the biggest problem. And if they are a soft boot, you can get a really nice fit around your feet. I do think that there are merits to having a hard shell boot. Uh, but the style of skating that I like to do and that I think 50-50 is really focused on um, would be a soft shell boot. All right, I am losing my voice. I want to thank everybody for joining me. This was an amazing hour and a half of me talking. Um, don't forget, if you need a helmet, I'm going to leave this link up all night. Um, we're giving away two helmets this week thanks to the helmetinitiative.org and our supporters on Patreon. You can go to backtoblading.com slash helmet. I will put a link in the live stream for people to click on. It's a lot easier to click than type. Backtoblading.com slash helmet. I would love to give you a helmet. We're going to be picking two people at random to get a helmet. If you need a helmet, it is super important to wear your helmet whenever you go out and skate. Let's make sure that while our numbers are growing, we don't lose anybody due to head injuries. We want to make sure that you can keep skating. Uh, thanks again to the helmetinitiative.org and our Patreon supporters for helping us get this giveaway going. Um, personal note, I want to encourage everybody out there, especially the younger generation, not old guys like me who have kids, but the younger kids who think that they are immune and maybe don't skate with helmets or whatever, go get vaccinated if you can. It's super important. If you're watching this, I know that you're rollerblade. I've had way too many rollerblading friends get sick from this stuff. I want to make sure that we do everything that we can uh, to encourage people to go get vaccinated. It is a free thing in the U.S. I know around the world vaccines are at different stages of deployment. Um, I think it's super important that we protect ourselves. There's a lot of misinformation out there about the vaccines. I encourage you to go out there and do your own research. Don't listen to your friend from high school on Facebook. Uh, do your own research if you don't trust me. But Definitely think about it. Um, it is something that is important. We need to make sure that you stick around. I don't want anybody out there getting this thing. I've had way too many friends get it, and uh, it's not its not fun. Uh, nobody's died, thankfully, but that's kind of not the point. Like, if you can get a shot to stop yourself from having the flu for two weeks and almost dying, hey, <laughs> let's do that. Um, I did have a friend who was in the ICU in... Uh, a ventilator for three days and that's scary it really hits home so um, I think it's super important if you have uh, any hesitations about it do your research um, go go to the who or the CDC or whatever and learn about uh, the safety of these vaccines I think it's important that we talk about it I don't think it's a political thing I think it's a life thing I want more rollerbladers I want to be able to go to Woodward and I want to be able to see everybody there and give everybody hugs and high fives and not worry about getting somebody sick or somebody getting me sick. So go and get your vaccine. It's super important. Um, hope everybody else is doing great. Um, hope you are going to skate this weekend. It's going to be a bit rainy here on Sunday, but I should be able to get out on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Um, hope that you have a good week and um, I will see you in two weeks.